Hello, my friends, and welcome on back to Motor City Mania. I'm your host, David T. Pike. And as always, we're gonna be diving in. So my friends, as I said in my community post, we are going to be doing things a little bit differently. As you guys currently know, my situation is not what I'm normally used to doing. So we're not gonna be having any intro videos. There's not gonna be any sort of, you know, fancy stuff in the background, no green screen. There's not really going to be much of an ending. It's just going to be me sitting in front of my camera phone and just talking to you guys. So. Really, the only thing that's going to remain the same is what I'm wearing for the most part. I forgot to wear my hat for these sets of videos, so you guys aren't going to see me with a hat for at least a couple of videos. But in any case, I figured that now that I have a chance to do it this way, we're going to talk some football. And obviously, we are going to talk about what happened last night in terms of the Lions and the Rams game, which I'm going to tell you this right now. The first thing I'm going to want to talk about is going to be... Aaron Glenn's defense because I'm going to tell you this much like my thumbnail image is going to suggest much like my title is going to suggest Aaron Glenn once again failed to actually do his job I'm sorry but for me the fact of the matter is we were going into that game before anything else happened on the field we were going into that game in a superior position we already had pretty much everybody on our defense fully healthy. The only players that were not going to be in that game that would have probably made a difference had they played was DJ Reader and Ify Melifonwu. That was it. So the fact of the matter was is that we had all of our guys practically playing, but yet, oh, that's right, the Rams came into that game. They didn't have their starting left tackle. They did not have their freaking, you know, starting right tackle. They also had a whole bunch of other guys that were injured as well and playing, such as Jonah Jackson was injured and playing. They also didn't have their starting tight end. So I was like, okay, the Rams offense coming into that game was already shorthanded. It was already weak. And despite that, throughout the course of the game, more and more Rams players left the game with injury again the freaking replacement right uh left tackle pardon me he left the game with an injury did not return then on top of that another tackle went down with injury if i recall correctly and then on top of that puka nakua left the game re-aggravating his knee injury so by the time we got to near the end of the game the Rams had reshuffled their offensive line all over again, had been completely reshuffled. I remember in the broadcast, they said that jo Jonah Jackson had gone from guard to center, then back to guard because they were constantly having to reshuffle their offensive line. And so I'm like, okay, here, you would think that this would be a perfect opportunity for the Lions to, one, not only get pressure, but to sack freaking Matthew Stafford, which I said was going to be a crucial factor going into this game because of the fact that the Rams offensive line was already weakened. But the fact that it got even more weakened, it got even more anemic, it got even more porous throughout the course of the game. I was like, dude, this is about to be sack fest, like just pure crazy. And it was just like, dude, by my count, I think the Lions should have had five sacks last night. And we only wound up with two because on two separate occasions, I remember Marcus Davenport having Matthew Stafford dead to rights and somehow Stafford just slipped away. And Stafford's not exactly the most fleet of foot. He's not the most agile. So I don't understand how that happened. And it even happened to Aiden Hutchinson on one occasion. So I'm like, we're having the chance to sack this dude and yet we're not taking advantage we're not wrapping him up we're not bringing him to the ground and as we saw last night when that happened almost every single time Stafford found a way to extend the play and threw the ball down the field to actually get freaking yardage and to convert for first downs that right there was probably the most aggravating thing I saw yesterday out of Aaron Glenn's defense was that even though Aaron Glenn was trying to bring pressure he was trying to blitz. He was trying to bring heat on Stafford. We were not taking advantage of those opportunities when we clearly had Stafford dead to rights. 
The second thing that annoyed the ever-living hell out of me was the fact that, once again, I did not see any adjustments, really, on Aaron Glenn's part. Think about it, folks. We all knew, at least I did anyway, that because the way the offensive line was going into this game for the Rams, they were going to not want to throw the ball deep because deeper routes take a lot longer time to develop. They take more time for the wide receiver to get down the field, which means it has to take even longer for the quarterback to hold on for the ball, hold on to the ball, pardon me, and for the lineman to hold their blocks. And that was virtually what happened almost, I would say, 75 to 80% of the game. Matthew Stafford was getting that ball out super freaking quick. Well, to me, it was a pretty simple thing. Okay, if the Rams are going to constantly check down to the freaking flats or right over the middle, you need to make sure that your backers and also your cornerbacks are playing closer to the line. They have to have tighter coverage, whether it's zone or man coverage. And we just didn't see that. Stafford kept freaking ridiculously taking advantage of that, and it didn't seem as if anybody was going to stop him. It did not seem as if Glenn was doing anything to try and take the flats away. Because Stafford obviously was not going to try and throw the ball down the field when he's knowing that freaking Aiden Hutchinson is right around the corner. So it's like, okay... Obviously, they're not going to try and throw intermediate routes. They're not going to try and throw deep routes. So you need to cover the short stuff. But it didn't seem as if Aaron Glenn got that memo because he didn't really do anything to change it. And then, oh, good Lord. I'm telling you this right now. The fact is, is that for the majority of that game, I was actually rather happy with how our defensive secondary played. I really, truly was. I liked the fact that, for the most part, I thought Terry and Arnold played a pretty decently good game, especially for his first game as an NFL professional against guys like Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, such as that. And I thought Carlton Davis did a pretty good job, too. But, in my honest opinion, the thing that bugged me the most was, one, the miscues, primarily those pass interference calls that kept extending drives for the Rams, one of which resulted in a touchdown. And then on top of that, the missed opportunities in the secondary that, you know, slipped through our fingers. Because there were two separate occasions where we could have had more interceptions, we could have had more turnovers from Matthew Stafford if we'd only secured the freaking interception. Brian Branch dropped an interception, and Carlton Davis literally had it land right in his damn bread basket. Dropped that one too. Had we freaking had that ball right then and there, we wouldn't have had to go out of overtime and potentially risk losing the game because at that point, we would have already been in field goal range. So all we would have had to do is just drive down the short remainder of the field. Even if we didn't get the touchdown, hey, we just kicked the field goal, game over. But that didn't happen. So to me, it's like, okay, when opportunities presented themselves, we did not take advantage of it. It was just like, dude, we're shooting ourselves in the damn foot. We're not taking advantage of the opportunities that Stafford is giving us. Because let's call it for what it is. By the time we got to the end of the game there, Stafford was in full panic mode. He was trying to find anything he possibly could to make the drives extend themselves. He was forcing passes just like the Stafford of old. He was trying to fit the ball anywhere he could, which meant, okay, quarterback is flushed, quarterback is rushed, quarterback is pressured. Okay. Now we're going to start having opportunities because when Stafford is in that mode, he's going to start threading the needle. And that means, okay, we're going to have an opportunity for turnovers. And we didn't take advantage of it. I will say this, though. Kirby Joseph, nice job, my friend. You definitely got a great interception to stop that drive. That was a great job by Kirby Joseph. Plus, on top of that, I loved the freaking, you know image of Matthew Stafford with his hands on top of his helmet looking like he was about to throw up because of how ridiculously mad he was. So that was a lasting image that I was absolutely happy with. But for me, the whole point and principle of why I'm upset with the defense and particularly Aaron Glenn is because, again, we have invested so much time, energy, resources into this defense. And again, the defense has been found wanting. When it's put come, I'll say this, when push comes to shove, at the very least, the defense finds a way to flex and not bow and stop opposing teams. 
That much I will give Aaron Glenn. But the problem is, is that it should never even come to that point. For as much talent as Aaron Glenn has gotten infused into this defense, it's not getting any better. Now, I will put a disclaimer on this. Obviously, this is the first game of the season. So we don't know yet how well this defense is going to get in the coming weeks. Because, again, most of these guys have not played throughout the course of the preseason. Most of these guys have only gone through practice. So for them, it's going to take probably a few games to get one back into game shape and game mode, but at the same time, kind of also start figuring out how to play better within their own scheme and system. But for me, when I was taking a look at the guys last night, it only seemed like a couple of guys truly were actually on point with their ability to play at the speed that they needed to play at. I thought Aiden Hutchinson, what, dude, I'm so thankful we have Aiden Hutchinson. Because without Aiden Hutchinson, I don't know what the hell we would have done last night. Because Aiden Hutchinson seemed to be the only freaking thing that was keeping the Rams offense in check, at least up front. Because Aiden Hutchinson was constantly getting within a damn whisker of sacking Matthew Stafford. So it was like, okay, at least as long as Hutchinson is in the game, Stafford cannot stay back there and get comfortable. Because other than that, Davenport would get close but couldn't wrap up. And while Levi Onzerike technically got a sack or a half a sack, whatever the case might have been, nobody really else got even close to trying to get towards Stafford. And again, it's not like the offensive line of the Rams was some juggernaut unit. That's why the most of my disappointment from last night's game is the defensive line. Because it's like, okay, we had Aiden Hutchinson. We had Aleem McNeil. We had Josh Pascal. We had Levi Onzerike. We had Marcus Davenport. We had our full damn complement of starters out there, and still it barely made any difference, despite the fact that the Rams were operating with second and sometimes third stringers. So it's like, okay, I know Stafford's getting the ball out fast. That makes it more difficult to try and sack the dude. But my God, for crying out loud, when you guys are not taking advantage, when you're literally that damn close to him, at that point, that's falling on the players. They're simply just not executing at the very end. But even still, for me, it all goes back to Glenn because it's like, dude, you should have been able to recognize what Stafford and the Rams were doing. Because towards the end there, it was just them just throwing the ball. They weren't really trying to run the ball at all because they knew they couldn't. So they're just throwing the ball all over the place. And it still didn't matter. It was like as if Aaron Glenn was just like, nope, I'm going to continue to do what I've been doing. And it's like, but Glenn, what you've been doing is not working. What you're doing is you're allowing Stafford with a makeshift, ragtag, you know, freaking hodgepodge line with one good receiver is freaking throwing all over us. I mean, for crying out loud, Matthew Stafford last night finished with 300 plus passing yards. How does that happen? How does that happen behind an offensive line that was as bad as it was when he only has one decently good receiver? To me, I just don't understand that. Because to me, it's like you should have had every opportunity to completely shut down the Rams' offense. I don't care how much of a genius Sean McVay is. For as shorthanded as that offense was last night, we shouldn't have even had this be a discussion of how close this game was. And that was why... For me, I instantly was just like, Aaron Glenn, you are not doing your job. You are not doing what you need to do. So for me, I just was absolutely disgusted because once again, it seems as if Aaron Glenn is so damn stubborn that he's not willing to make adjustments. It just didn't seem like he was doing anything different by the time the game was at the point it was. And it was like, dude, we need something different here. We need to do something different to try and stop this Rams offense. And it was just like, by the time it was over, it was like, the only way we're going to win this game is if Stafford screws up, which thank God he did because on that last throw, which allowed them to punt the ball away so that way we could drive down the field, get that late field goal, Stafford freaking overthrew Cooper Cup. That right there was virtually the only way we were going to win because Stafford was going to have to make a mistake. And if you take a look at that particular play, Cooper Cup had nobody behind him. He had already beaten his man in coverage. So if Stafford actually had put that ball right where it was, we would be having a completely different discussion probably this morning. But 
Anyway, folks, I'm going to end the episode. I've had enough of a rant, you know, going after Aaron Glenn and the facts of the defense that I didn't like last night. But I've said my piece, and I'm going to end the episode and say thank you all for watching in another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. Obviously, this adjusted version of it. If you like what you saw, by all means, I highly encourage you all to watch the next episode. Also encourage you all to do one of these three things, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I also highly encourage you all, please, if you've subscribed in the past, to please, 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 if you did not do so at the time, make sure you also hit the bell notification icon so that way you guys never miss any more content that I push out. I also encourage y'all please to share this content with your Lions friends and family members. Share it on YouTube, share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, share it anywhere and everywhere you can. The more we can share it, the greater the channel can grow and spread. And with that being said to everybody, I hope y'all are having a great day. I hope y'all are having a blessed day. I hope y'all have something in your life that makes you happy, makes you smile. So glad that we got the first win under our belts. Go Lions! And God bless, my friends.